Welcome back. Hope you've had a good weekend. We're going to carry on with our journey through Lent, looking at it through the lens of Celtic spirituality. Today's reading is from Psalm 78. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known, that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. So wherever you're at in your day, whether it's at the beginning or the end of your day, somewhere in the middle, let's just pause, have a minute of quiet and collect ourselves from the, the scattered <laughs> winds it feels like sometimes. And we just pull all of our senses together into this one moment. And we focus on the presence of God who is with us. Father, help us right now to quieten our hearts, to be still, to know that you are God and that you are close. As I'm quiet, I can hear some distant sounds, the road, traffic, people outside, not too many. I can hear my wife upstairs. <laughs> I can hear the sound of the ticking clock. It just reminds me that time keeps marching on, time never stops, time keeps going. Lord, help us to live each moment well. Amen. Well, this week's going to be kind of a fun week as we're going to be focusing on what the Celts would have done. Uh, was very much part of their tradition to tell stories, to sing songs, to uh, recite poetry. And that whole um, so that whole culture of telling stories would have been very much part of their culture. So the bead, when he writes about those times, he writes about times of gathering, where there would undoubtedly be food and drink. And in the middle of the, the times of gathering where there's food and drink, there would be the telling of tales, the singing of songs, the reciting of poetry. And they used to have something that they would call passing the harp. I love that thought. So that sense that one person would pass the baton on to the next and take turns of doing their thing. And their thing, whether it's a story or a song or a poem, would have been trying to reflect on something that has depth and trying to bring that deep thought into reality, into real lives. So it might be a song that, that connects with some of the deep thoughts in the Bible or, or in life and then draws them out and makes you really think about them. I love all that sort of stuff. So we're, we're going to be spending um, a moment each day just thinking about one thought in particular. And today I just thought I'd read... Um, one of the blessings out of this book, Benedictus, by John Donoghue. John O'Donoghue, sorry. And uh, it'll help us as we just go into some contemplation. So this is uh, a blessing that he's written, and it's called For Longing. 
I thought that fits in pretty well with Lent, actually, you know. So Lent is all about our passions, our desires, and making sure that the right things are, are the things that are at the, at the top for us, at the surface for us. And in the days to come, we'll be reading some ancient Celtic poetry and songs. But today, John O'Donoghue. Blessed be the longing that brought you here and quickens your soul with wonder. May you have the courage to listen to the voice of desire that disturbs you when you have settled for something safe. May you have the wisdom to enter generously into your own unease, to discover the new direction your longing wants you to take. May the forms of your belonging in love, creativity and friendship be equal to the grandeur and the call of your soul. May the one you long for, long for you. May your dreams gradually reveal the destination of your desire. May a secret providence guide your thought and nurture your feeling. May your mind inhabit your life with the sureness with which your body inhabits the world. May your heart never be haunted by ghost structures of old damage. May you come to accept your longing as divine urgency. And may you know the urgency with which God longs for you. Maybe there's something in that that's just popped out to you. And maybe you've got some other favourite prose, song, poem, story that you might like to reflect on. Well, let's just take a moment and allow the longings of our hearts to be drawn in a Godward direction. We'll just pause for 30 seconds. Lord, thank you that you are the creator of all things. That creativity is something that was in you and you birthed it in the world around us and in each and every one of us. Thank you that in our mess, we get that picture of at creation, you hover over the waters. And our mess was one of emptiness one of darkness, and one of chaos. And your creativity spoke a word into our emptiness, darkness and chaos and brought fullness, brought light and brought order. And in bringing all those things, fullness and light and order, you brought incredible beauty to the world and also to our lives. Thank you for your creativity. Help us to engage very, very regularly, probably daily, with the beauty of creativity. As we engage in creativity ourselves, as we enjoy creation all around us, let it bring us fullness, let it bring us light, and let it bring us an order to our days. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. See you tomorrow. We'll carry on looking at prose and songs and poetry. Bye.